There's an increasing buzz around the city at the moment uh, when you talk about copper, certainly in the connection uh, with the potential rewiring of cities and people's houses so you can charge your new electric cars. We're talking now to uh, a new uh, copper play that's been around a while, but certainly in terms of uh, market cap, it's a, a small cap company, Asia Met Resources, which has uh, a copper asset in Indonesia. Peter Bird, director at the company, joins us now. Um, explain a bit more about what it is you've got. I've already said a, a big duck copper for you um, but to explain what the asset is yeah so so our principal asset that's in feasibility at the minute is the BKM copper project uh, the scope of which is uh, for 25,000 tonnes per annum of copper cathode production over about a eight, an eight to nine year period um, so that's our principal project that's right in the middle of feasibility and uh, we would hope to complete that feasibility towards the end of this calendar year very early in the next calendar year bringing it into production in uh, in late calendar 2019. So that's our principal asset. Sitting around that we have a very large uh, asset that needs work sitting behind that called Butong and a whole suite of exploration properties, all of which are in Indonesia. Now, for, for the purposes of naming the asset, this is BKM, is that right? Correct, BKM. Which is, uh, which I said is in, in Indonesia. Um, uh, are you fully funded through the uh, feasibility study We're program? We're fully funded through the feasibility. So, so we completed a capital raising recently for eight million US dollars. And the, the main uh, item uh, for that uh, capital raising was to complete that feasibility study. Uh, there'll be a bit of peripheral money allocated to some of the other assets, but that was the main cause for the raise. Those that follow the company would have seen the RNS this week about the, the drill results that you've had. Sure. Explain a bit more about this and where those are. Sure. So BKM is our copper project, which I've just talked about. Surrounding that, there are a suite of other prospects slash projects that we will progressively evaluate. Um, the project you're referring to is the BKZ project, which is located to the immediate north of BKM. And for those that have followed the company would see we've had some really exciting results from a polymetallic point of view uh, on BKZ. We'll progressively work around those assets um, over, the, over the next little while, um, including uh, BK West and BK South. BKZ, has it got the potential, do you think, to be a standalone project in its own right? It does have the potential. We're very early days yet, but, it, but look, the results to date are very exciting and uh, we, we'll um, progressively release results as they become available. Yeah, wherever you see um, copper, you quite often get gold. Uh, copper and gold go together, as any geologist will know. The Bhutan Copper Gold Project looks an interesting one. Explain more about what's, uh, what's going on there. Sure. Butong, unlike BKM, is a very large project, so it's a big porphyry system and has within it about two, just under two and a half million tonnes of contained copper in resource with a gold credit. Um, we own that project currently 40% uh, in, in, uh, in conjunction with a local Indonesian partner, Media Group, who have 60%. Yeah. Um, you recently raised, I think, what, six, six million pounds, didn't you? And I think Correct. you were a new institutional investor on the, on yes, the list, didn't you, JP Morgan, uh, which was a very exciting uh, prospect, I know, for those investors that have, uh, have, have stuck with you. Um, do you see more institutional interest coming into the business? Y yes, I do. I think, I think that, you know, Asia Met's a little bit like a gangly teenager. It's starting to grow up. And a, a, as you start to grow your asset base and your portfolio, you tend to attract the interest of these bigger organisations. And I think particularly in the context of uh, the fact that we are in a copper environment where we're reasonably optimistic about the copper price. Uh, and I think when you talk to these big institutions, they also recognise that there will be a supply deficit in copper. Uh, and to get exposure to that, particularly on the AIM market, you're relatively limited. There's not many opportunities, and this probably presents one such opportunity for investors. Yeah, um, but obviously you've got to continue the program of de-risking uh, to, to bring them on. Um, seeing JP Morgan on the list is, is very encouraging. Um, Indonesia, what's that like to work in? Um, do you perceive that as um, a, 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 an a opportunity? I mean, where do you see the, the relationship going with the government? How, yeah. how difficult is that? Look, we see it as an enormous opportunity. I mean, Indonesia is a country of about 350 million people, predominantly Muslim. Um, it, it's certainly on an upward growth path of as, as a country, a lot of foreign investment in Indonesia. Uh, but like all the countries that are growing, they don't sort of just necessarily grow in a linear fashion. They can be a bit stop-start. 
Um, but yet, yeah, more generally, we see it as an opportunity. Uh, unlike other countries, which are very difficult, I think you know they are pro trying to advance their country and therefore you know projects and, and initiatives within that country, whatever yeah. they may be. Yeah. Okay. Any any questions for for Peter? Yes. Can you tell us when you expect the copper deficit in the global copper market paper? Sure. Um, so, everyone hear me okay? The, the, the copper, copper market's about a 22 million tonne per annum market, growing at a rate of about 2% per annum. Uh, so, so, just the market itself needs about 400,000 tonnes of new copper capacity per annum. But if you look at the supply demand balance, it would appear that late 2018, mid 2019, there will be a supply deficit. So, I suppose the answer to your question is early to mid 2019 is when we're seeing a deficit uh, coming into the market. And there's very little um, new capacity coming on in that period of time. And just one other question, can you tell us when you get your feasibility study sometime in January, what is the plan in terms of the company's activity in the first half of 2018? Yeah. Okay, so, so with respect to the feasibility, there's, there's two, two parts to that process. The first part is that all the technical work that's on, ongoing and the feasibility, and the second element to that is, if you like, the funding element. So I think once that's completed, we'd like to be the, the technical work to be in a position to say, right, we have a, one or a number of potential funding solutions to move forward and develop it. So I, I think the shorter answer is we won't be sitting on our hands looking at the feasibility. Hopefully we'll be looking to say, okay, we have a solution to develop the project. Presuming the feasibility has a positive outcome, right? Any, any more? Yes, please. Um, as the board of directors, what do you guys see as the biggest risk to the project? The, where can it go? Where can it go wrong? Is it all pretty great in the RNS come out, but in your meetings, what are you sat around concerned about or worried? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say concern, but uh, but I think with any any project at this stage, there are a pretty standard set of risk factors. Um, so if you're being pragmatic about it, your biggest risk right now will be your execution risk, right? So let's assume that the feasibility has a very positive outcome. Y your next big step is to build it and execute it. So that's probably the biggest risk, if you would like. But but that ri I don't want to alarm you that. That risk is not unusual at this point in the journey. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I just want to follow up with one final question: is about um, new investors. Um, obviously, you always like to see retail investors come on. Those that aren't uh, invested, what do you say to them about to encouraging them to come on board? Well, I, I, I think it's a pretty compelling argument. Asia Mit's a little bit of an unusual company. It's got a project in feasibility. It's got a suite of very good assets sitting around that particular project. Behind that's a very large project being Butong, all of which have a very strong copper exposure in a marketplace where we think copper is set to rise quite strongly. But even if it stayed at its current level, sort of around $3 a pound, uh, BKM, for example, the PEA numbers suggest a cash cost of around $1.28. So it, it's, a great, it's a great option play in the copper market yeah. and a good story. Yeah, copper's great as well. Okay, look, Peter, thanks indeed uh, for joining us. Uh, Peter Bird is a director there of Asia Met Resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.